Hello, welcome to vlog number two, two weeks in a row. So proud of myself. Um, but seriously, I just finished editing this video and I think you're really gonna like it. It's a behind the scenes of painting this still life back here. And it shows a lot of painting, a lot of talk about the process and just some goals for next year. So I would really appreciate if you like and subscribe. Thank you for being here and let's get started. So today I'm going to do something I haven't done in a very long time, which is painting a still life. Still florals as usual, but it's going to have a much different feel. So living in the desert, especially in the winter, there's not flowers just blooming all over the place like there might have been in the springtime, which I'm sure is the same for most of you. So. I went and grabbed this beautiful bouquet from my local supermarket and I'm really excited about it because it has a lot of variation in color and texture so I think I'm going to be able to get quite a few different reference photos just by rearranging these florals. So I grabbed my little utility cart, made a makeshift table out of a frame and then dropped my grandma's, my great grandma's um, quilt on it. She used to make us these for Christmas all the time, and so I thought it'd be really fun to incorporate that. So you'll see, I'm like rotating, rearranging these flowers over and over again. And like I said, that's just so I can get as many reference photos as possible while these flowers are still, you know, in their prime. Another big source of inspiration for painting these still lifes is the huge arch window I have in my studio. In the morning, it casts this huge, stark light on this wall. So I knew that putting a floral arrangement in front of it was gonna create a really beautiful, intricate shadow. So that light source is almost equally as important as the flowers themselves in this painting. For this piece, I'm gonna be working on wood panel. This one is 18 by 24. And when working on wood panel, it's really best to gesso first. Um, so I'm using this Liquitex gesso. It's actually clear, which is really nice, especially for some of um, my other work where I want the wood to show through. I'm not gonna do that in this piece, but still really get great initial layer. Then I started sketching out the piece. I get a lot of questions about why I use the colors I use either in the sketch or the underpainting. And honestly, for this piece in particular, this is purely because I bought a new tube of purple paint and <laughs> I really wanted to use the purple paint. <laughs> so that just made me happy. So that's totally a valid reason to use whatever color you want to sketch out your painting. But most of the time when I paint like a solid base color, it's because I want that color to show through in the painting in some way. So a lot of times I'll use a really warm, bright color like pink, and that's because I have a lot of green in my painting. So that pink kind of shines through and warms things up. And also any little unpainted bits, uh, it, it gives a nice little pop of color. Towards the end of this last year, I actually used black a lot and that's because I wanted the paintings to have a lot of depth. And so by starting with that black, I already had my darkest color and then I was just able to work up with the light. So, you know, just pick what works best for you. And if it's just because you really like a color, totally valid. I begrudgingly brought the folding table back in here just this week because I haven't found a new painting table yet. So I needed something to set my supplies on while I'm working and this was the only thing available. 
but it's gone as soon as I find something new. So I'm starting to block in color now, and one thing very different about this painting from most is that I'm using acrylic. So I always use acrylic for live wedding paintings, but when I'm working with this in the studio, I almost exclusively use oil paint. But one of my goals for this year is to try to incorporate acrylic more because going back and forth between oil and acrylic is actually kind of difficult. Um, they work very differently, so acrylic dries almost immediately and oil stays wet for days, even weeks. And so the process of working with the two is very different. And when I go and I'm working under pressure to do my live paintings, but I've been working with oil, sometimes it throws me off a little bit. So I want to see if I can incorporate this acrylic into how I paint in the studio as well. Another reason I would love to keep using acrylic is because, like I said, it dries so fast. So one, I can probably finish a painting faster because I don't need to wait for any layers to dry. And two, I can start making prints and stuff like the next day. So usually with oil, I have to wait weeks before I can start that process. And I would love to be able to do it while I'm like so excited and in the process of making this painting. So if it all works out, that would be like the ideal situation. I do struggle quite a bit during this painting, just in the differences. Um, you can see just as I'm painting this picture, I'm trying to blend a little more than even acrylic will allow. So I have to layer and layer, but I think that's something that'll get better as I get more used to working with it. Also my style, just in general, isn't super blended, so I think overall it's gonna be a good switch, I just need to get used to it. So as I start working on the greens, I'll just let you know, this process took forever and I ended up speeding it up and cutting a lot out because it took forever. <laughs> and part of that is because there was so much variation because of that light source, which is a great thing for the painting as a whole. But also I had to mix some of these same colors over and over again because like I said, acrylic dries so fast. So it's kind of a blessing and a curse you know, it's great that I can like work faster, but I also have to remix my paint colors so many times because they dry almost immediately on my palette, which wasn't really a problem when I lived in wet, humid Louisiana, but out here in El Paso, it's, it dries so fast. One of the reasons I chose this composition was because of the overall shape of the arrangement. I really liked that there was the color of flowers, but it wasn't super colorful. They weren't all over. There was just kind of these like quirky little ones sticking up at the top and the rest of it was really full greenery, which honestly the greens are my favorite. And they weren't all like perky and perfect. A lot of them were wilting, collapsing over the side of the picture. And I really liked that movement.
So now we're moving into the quilt, which is the part that literally broke my brain. <laughs> so honestly, I had a lot of fun painting this because it was such a challenge. And that's one of the most fun parts of painting to me is like trying to figure out how things are gonna work. And so you can see I started just trying to go straight for color blocking at first. That did not work. I started making this grid to kind of see how the patches of this quilt would cover the form of the table and that worked so much better. After I did that from there I was just able to come and fill in the color, add the lights and darks and it worked out really well. Then you can see here that I'm starting out with a very gray background. It honestly looks nice. I really like it. Um, but some of you might be mad at me because I am about to cover it up. <laughs> um, like I said, it does look really nice, but I think the very like mid-level gray was throwing me off with the greens. Some of the greens were kind of blending into it and I wanted it to be more dramatic than that. So I came back with this plum color that I'm obsessed with and it looks really good. Unfortunately, I didn't film myself painting the shadow in because I repainted it like 50 million times. Um, it was a struggle, but I'm happy with it now. And here it is. Since I did not film the end of adding in the shadow, here is the final painting. I'm super proud of this. Love the way it came out. I felt very challenged in a lot of it. The quilt, the shades of green, the shadow that I repainted literally 12 times, but I kept working on it and I'm so happy with the end result. So this is the end of the vlog. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you did. And I'm gonna be posting a lot more videos. Um, I'm having a lot of fun making these and I want this long form video content to be a regular part of my process. So like and subscribe so you get notified when there's new videos and I will see you soon. Bye.